Well, it was a uh, it was a great college football game, and you hate for anyone to lose in that situation, especially the way it happened. Rondrito Blankenship has been a, is and has been an unbelievable representative of the University of Georgia and kicker, and uh, just just heart goes out to him and losing in that fashion. He's a he's an outstanding young man, and he's about all the right things in college athletics. But really proud of our guys. You know, you show a lot of metal, <clears throat> a lot of toughness. You talk in terms of the character of the program, the culture of the program, the leadership of the program, uh, and, and the character of the young men in that locker room. You know, we've been through a lot this year. We hadn't, we've been very inconsistent to this point. And the bottom line is we did what we had to do to win the ball game. You know, Ryan gets hurt, the carry on comes in, and gutsy has held performance. You know, he's been limited in practice, hasn't been able to do a lot as far as those things are concerned. I thought Brian did a really good job of adjusting to, to get some things where he could. You know, it's hard. You don't rep, rep much as the backup quarterback. You just don't. You don't get the many turns and reps. And I thought the carry on just came in and fought his butt off. I'm so proud of him. Uh, you know, defensively got some turnovers. That's what we needed. Scored on defense. Got the game in overtime. Of course, you know, we missed the field goal. And, you know, our heart's breaking for Parker right there. And just give us another chance. We went for it on fourth down. I feel like we needed a, a touchdown in that situation. We were a little fatigued defensively. Uh, you know, and Jake was throwing the ball extremely well and throwing the ball in some really tight areas. You know, he completed some balls that we had, thought we had good coverage and give them credit. They made some plays in the throwing game as far as those things were concerned. But, uh, hey, our kids fought their ass off. You know, you, you can't question uh, that as far as our football team is concerned or how hard they play. Uh, we need to be a little more consistent and uh, figure some things out moving forward. But we're going to enjoy tonight and start getting ready for Florida tomorrow. And they've got a good football team. So I'll open it up for any questions. I think he, I'm not sure, you know, we'll find out more. I mean, he was uh, just not moving well enough to protect himself, and that was the reason why we took him out. It was not that we feel like there's any severe injury or anything. He just wasn't moving well enough to protect himself, and the, the health of the student athlete is the most important thing. Also, in the first overtime, the fourth and one, you mentioned you thought you needed a touchdown. Was that just because Parker had missed the previous one? You said no, it had nothing to do with that. I just, we were fatigued on defense. You think, you know, in terms when the drive they had before half, Israel makes the interception to score, and then they come back down the field. We're at 46 snaps in the second half, and a lot of that wasn't necessarily because of our offenses, because they they maintained some third downs. Uh, you know, you know, yeah. I mean, you're nine of 18 on third down. That stinks. So, you know, we weren't we weren't getting off the field enough on third down in the first half, and they were staying on the field. Again, I thought we had some really good coverage. We had con some contested throws. They did a nice job. Um, but I thought we were a little fatigued. I felt like we needed a touchdown because I, I was concerned about us going out and making another stop defensively. Really? Well, you know, I, I really feel like, Colin, you know, pretty much for the whole year we've played consistently well, you know, consistently well up front. Javon's been very disruptive. Kobe played another good game. He had a couple tackles for us. Ricky Sanders continues to come on. Zach Pickens. You know, those four guys inside, DJ, you know, Aaron Sterling, JJ, Danny Fennell um, flashed in there a little bit. All of those guys have played good football for us. We've just got to continue to come on defensively. We've certainly improved ourselves uh, in how we're playing, and, uh, and we've still got a lot of football to play. And that's the thing we've got to realize, and we've got to continue to, to press forward and move forward and put our best foot forward. But we've certainly improved in our last three weeks out, you know. Yeah, well, that, I mean, to me, it's about tackling. You know, those guys, they have really good backs. They finish runs. Swift finished a bunch of runs on us. You know, you're sitting there at, after a first down run, and I'm thinking, all right, it's second and eight, and Kyle Krantz comes over the headset and says second and six. I'm like, damn, he gained two more yards. So we got to get his cleats out of the dirt better, but we tackled well on defense here. You know, we really tackled well today. And I, you know, go back and watch the Notre Dame game. They held them to 23 points. I think it was 146 or 152 yards rushing. It, it all comes down to tackling and to getting guys on the ground. We didn't have any explosive runs. Yeah, we did. Swift had one at 14 and White had one at 12. So, um, but nothing that, that was a, that was a huge momentum or field position changer, you know, as far as those things are concerned. Well, just how good is this field to you? It, I could care less about Will Muschamp. I'm really happy for our players. I'm happy for a staff that works its ass off. I'm happy for our fan base so they can enjoy the week. And, uh, and, and that's really what it's all about to me, but it's never about me. Well, you just ended up being better on tackling. What have you guys done since the beginning of the season to get better with that? 
I wish I could tell you it was some fancy tackling drill, but it wasn't anything. We just getting ourselves in better position to bring our feet. We're wrapping up better. We're, we, we, you know, we, we had this bad disease of wanting to butt guys down, and we think that's going to happen in our league, and it doesn't. It sometimes, for some reason, I feel like in my four years at South Carolina, it takes about two games for us to figure that out. That actually, coach may know what the hell he's talking about. Well, just you know, it's 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 what you want. It's what you. It's why you coach in this league. It's why you coach at South Carolina. To be a part of a great win like this, a, a huge win for us on the road, uh, with probably no one in the stadium other than the parents, the kids, and the people sitting in that locker room believed it was going to happen. And Ray Tanner, he, he believed it was going to happen. And after that, we we just, we just worry about us. We're going to take care of us, and that's how we're going to keep moving forward. Let's go in the back there. Coach, I know uh, the President Caslin, he, he he knew we were going to win too. He told me for he told me for the game. <laughs> Add that on your article. <laughs> the curiosity went back to practice from the Hampshire. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, because of the situation we're in and the lack of practice time, because he missed practice time during the open week. Um, and, and so we really want to continue to develop his role as a receiver. And when, you don't, when you're not able to practice as much, especially it all being new, it's very difficult to do that. Um, but, you know, the guy's the ultimate teammate. And it's not happening much in college athletics right now. What can I do for the team is his motto. And what can I do to help? And again, that says a lot about how he's raised. And as Atika and, and, and Lamont and stepdad are great people. And, uh, and just really proud of that young man to be in this moment, to have this moment to help propel us to a win in that situation is huge. And I appreciate his patience and loyalty to the University of South Carolina. Stand back, Mitch. Coach, when you know, the pressure starts to mount and you know, the momentum starts to shift, have you ever seen one of your teams respond to get off the mat as much as they did at the time at the time of this game? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've seen that a lot. But, you know, at the end of the day, really proud of our guys on the road against a really good football team. And they are a really talented team that's coached extremely well. And, uh, you know, the, they convert a fourth down play. And we held them on the, on the one PI. That was, that, was, that was PI on the fourth down. And we held the guy. Shouldn't have, but we did. And then they convert the big over route in the back pylon to, to Robertson there. And that was a route we've worked on. We've got to work on a little bit more, obviously. But, you know, just, you know, again, it, it says a lot about the type young men you're recruiting. It says a lot about the character. It says a lot about belief. It says a lot about culture. It says that everything you want to see demonstrated in a blue-collar organization, and that's who we are. And it's real simple, really simple to see. And anybody can test that. They just must not like the Gamecocks very much. Well, you know, Parker's got the leg to do it. Now, people would ask me what is his yard line. We'd say the 35-yard line for a 52-yarder. But we, he's hit those before. He had the distance. It was just a little bit right. So I felt good about – I told BMAC, get us to the 40, and we're going, Parker's going to go win the game. And I put him in the same situation again. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I thought, felt, you know, going into the year, Obviously, very disappointed in our first ball game. You're up 20 to nine. You feel like you got the game in hand. You get a turnover. You get a holding penalty, a jump off sides. You pin them back, and they go 98 yards with a freshman quarterback. I mean, we're going to play field position in a situation and play behind our defense. There's 12 minutes to go in the game. We made the right decision to punt on fourth and one. That was the right decision. I don't give a shit what any of y'all say. All right? And we pinned them back on the five yard line, and they went 95 yards. And you know what? They made the plays they had to make uh, to, to, to win the game. You know, we didn't you know, stop as many explosive plays against Alabama as we needed to be. And then on, against Missouri, we did nothing to help our football team by how we played in the first half offensively. So, again, we will continue to improve and get better. We gave up some yards, but they had 95 plays in the game as well, you know. So we got to get off the field on third down. Jay Tom's not a guy that turns the ball over, over very often. He'll get some three times today. Yeah. What about his well, he's a fantastic player and, and very uncharacteristic. But we were able to get some pressure, which I don't care how many snaps and turns he has when you have a lot of pressure. And we were able to, the one under to Israel, Javon Kinlaw, had a huge rush inside. Uh, the ball was a tip ball in the spacing concept in overtime that Israel uh, picked off on that ball. And I think there was a miscommunication between the receiver and Jake on the, on the back shoulder ball on their sideline, in my opinion. I don't, I don't know that, but that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, Hutch was just cramping a little bit, and Aaron was just 
Uh, just it, it, meniscus is bothering him a little bit, but he's fine. Well, sometimes the results don't always equal where you are, you know, and, and that's, uh, you know, I always try to tell the players it's not always about the distance, it's about the direction where you're headed. And I always felt like we were headed in the right path. I always felt like we have the right people in the building to be successful. And, um, and it's been frustrating. It really has, uh, you know, and it hurts <laughs> the staff that works extremely hard and these young men extremely hard, and I, and I hate it for our fan base. But, you know, today was a good win for us. Uh, we got to build off of it. You know, how are we going to handle this? You know, that's, that's going to be a question I have for our football team moving forward. We need to handle this the right way and understand our preparation helped us win this ball game and how we practice and how we go about our, our business. That's, that's how you win games. That's how you prepare. And uh, that's what we've got to continue to do. I'm not, I don't have any comment. Yeah. No, DeCaron's fine. He's 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 fine with everything we do. It's no different than when, when you asked about Ryan. I mean, it's about finding out what they do best and what they're most comfortable doing, and that's what we need to do. Um, you know, as far as those things are concerned. So we'll 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 drill down what we need to do when we know that moving forward, which we don't know that right now. Well, I think that, you know, the, the one interception on the touchdown, there was really good pressure. So that's, that's the best pass defense in America is pressure. And I think that, you know, he was able to, to make a play on the ball and return to the end zone. The tip ball was a nice, he broke on the ball well. And then I think on the, on the back shoulder ball was something that they do a lot. I'm not sure what, was, what happened on that play. I don't know if that was a miscommunication between the quarterback and receiver. I don't know. But he made a really nice play because that's a very difficult ball to defend, and he played it perfectly from what I my vantage point on the sideline. So, no, he continues to be very productive, and we've got to all continue to be very productive. Is there a point you worry about on snaps, or did you just feel like he was playing so well you had to get him, you had to keep him in there? Felt like he played a lot. Kenall? Yeah. Well, we tried to take him out about three times, and he said, "The hell, we all went back in the game." <laughs> so, I mean, have you ever seen him? He's like that big. <laughs> I said, yeah, "Let him keep playing." No, we monitor that. We do monitor that. And he normally is pretty good on those situations. But, you know, when competitive guys want to play, and he's a competitive guy, he wanted to play in the game. And, you know, we keep trying to take him out. I said, hell, let him play. He's playing good. Anything else for Coach? All right, thank you.